Mission West and I'm not even at a Lancer game or if I'm at Free State versus Olay to South. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, as long as you're able to get yourself onto that field that day, that whole coaching staff has faith in you that you're going to be in class Monday through Friday. And that's ultimately what matters. It is. Yeah. It is. Get your education. So if any, any of you guys are listening that are players or, or high school students right now, you know, make sure you're taking care of that business. Uh, very important. Uh, you mentioned uh, Gardner Edgerton, too, um, coming yes. in the league. And, and uh, you know, they, they've been a team that we've seen in the playoffs the last two years and have kind of given us, given us some trouble. Just matchup wise, that is correct. We've had a couple close games with them. Uh, you know, new regime there. Uh, that was Cornelison um, coming up from uh, Hutch. So, you know, how, what what do you think there? What do you see? Um, they could easily be uh, right now. There's a, uh, even with them going uh, winning six games in the last four years, they could easily find themselves at a four and four record, possibly five and four getting into that week 10 and they've got a great new coaching staff um recently uh greg webb left uh the suburban league and he used to be with eudora he's a longtime state championship coach at claflin and he was at eudora for about 11 or 12 years before going over to truman in the suburban league and he's going to make a huge addition to their coaching staff because he knows the Kansas City metro area very, very well. And he will help Ryan Cornelson out with anything he needs, even contacting coaches within the Sunflower League that he doesn't know. But it, um, also with Gardner Edgerton, uh, Ryan Cornelson has a huge advantage having played both a late to south and a late to east twice as a Hutch head coach, <coughs> as a Hutch coach these last four years. Yeah. So even though those kids will be gone, he knows who Craig Lewis and Jesse Owen are. Yeah. And that'll be a huge, huge asset for him. Yeah, and Jesse, I mean, obviously not a new coach to the league. He's been in the league, and, and you know, we've played them. And his teams were always well prepared. Uh, you know, our our flex bone attack was, was not easy to prepare for uh, that we, we previously had here. But his kids always seemed prepared for it, and he had them coached up. You know, he, he knew how to defend it. He he ran some of it, run some of it, too. So, you know, that helped him and helped prepare his kids. So uh, Yeah, Jesse Owens, probably one of the most, right now, underrated coaches, yeah. I would believe, in the league if you wanted to give any of that to the coaching staffs of all 13. He knows exactly what he's doing. Um, just as a student athlete for Gene Weir when he was at Shawnee Mission North, or at dis, disregard that, when he was at Olathe North as a student athlete, winning the first state title in 96, and then coming back after he got out of college as a weight room teacher at Olathe North for probably about 13 or 14 years, being part of three more state titles, or I think four, I think, to be exact, and then leaving to take the coaching position at Olathe East. I mean, it was a huge step for him, and that position, I believe, could be open for him one day. Should yeah. he ever choose to return? But I think he's doing pretty good at Olathe East. All the kids love him. They got a great administration over there. I mean, I would look to see big things coming from him after going um, three and six and five and five in these last two years to definitely making a move in week 10 or 11. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say they're a team that's trending up. Oh, absolutely. And you can't discount any of the Shawnee Missions or any of the Olathe's, no. regardless of their records. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's what's the next team you want to talk about, uh, new coach-wise? Uh, right now, I mean, just quietly, I mean, it was not made that big of a noise during the winter uh, basketball season. It was Aaron Hafner hiring, um, coming in at Olathe Northwest, being the third coach in the history of the school. I mean, he's originally from Western Kansas, and this is the first time he's coached high school football in about 12 years. Okay. After uh, coaching in Division Three in Iowa uh, with a Luther College, which is where he was at the, as a head coach. <coughs> and prior to that, uh, he was at William Penn as an assistant for okay. about 10 years. Okay. So he's been away from the high school game, but he also... 
much like Zach Rampey has a huge asset towards him where he can get his kids recruited. Oh, absolutely. Even yeah, that's, hu- that's huge. That's huge. Even if even if he has a down year in his first year, he can still get the Men American Nazarenes and the William Jewels mm-hmm. to come and get his kids a great education. And uh, didn't didn't he uh, coach at Webb City at, at one point um, over on the Missouri side a long uh, time was, ago? I don't believe he was at Webb City. Um, he was in a... I, I think he might have been for maybe a couple years. Okay, I thought because I, I thought someone mentioned that he's a big flexbone guy, and that he runs a lot of similar to what what Web City uh, uh, does because he was down there and had learned that. But I mean, it'll be it'll um, be determined with Olathe Northwest. I mean, they have, <coughs> they uh, they have a lot to learn. I mean, they the program itself is been struggling from the start pretty much since it began Mm -hmm. and with it being uh 16 years old this year i mean there's still a long way for uh, the ravens to go and they uh, they've only had maybe three or four seasons out of their 15 where they've been above 500 but that's not their fault but they've had great coaching and todd dane and chip sherman formerly of shawnee mission east where he retired this past year and I mean, he Chip, was, Chip was a good football coach. Oh, Chip was a great football coach. In these last 30 years, he's impacted kids with his 20 years at Platte County, mm-hmm. winning three state titles from 2000 to 2002, and then coming over to Salina Central for a year, or, or Salina South, excuse me, and then four years with Shawnee Mission East and five with the Lakes Northwest. Yeah. Um, and just kind of we'll transition there. We'll go ahead and talk about Shawnee Mission East. I mean, Chip Sherman kind of started that transition where East went from a doormat, really, uh, to where they they were competitive and they were getting in the playoffs and they were winning a playoff game or two. Uh, you know, he, he kind of got them trending up. He was that guy that, that turned that. You know, Delaney came in, took it to another level, went to back-to-back state titles in his first two years. Absolutely. And when Chip came in in 2009, coming to Shawnee Mission East, uh, the Lancers um, on 7500 Mission Road, the school is mostly known for its swimming and diving, tennis and golf, and trading state titles back and forth between the swimming teams and golf and tennis throughout the years for the last two or three decades, but in football, this was out of the blue that he came from Salina South and got Shawnee Mission East to where they are today. And he is the foundation. Even mm-hmm. on that 2010 team when the school went, when the team finished eight and two, I was okay with that. And I would never have eight years later thought with or without a state title, mm-hmm. I would have as an alum myself, would have not needed it. Yeah. Needed to see that and be f- perfectly content with an 8-2 and two record. I mean, that alone got the Lancers started at, and they're 74-14 and 14 right now, eight years in with two school years left to go in this decade, which wow. has never been accomplished Great. by yeah. any of the four decades the school was open prior in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah. What's, so what's like the biggest, like the biggest change? Like, like when, when you come in and like you're a good coach, what's the biggest thing you do? Because you're not getting like recruiting different kids, or maybe are you? But you're not recruiting different kids. So like, what, is it just culture? Yeah, culture, culture definitely is a huge piece of that. Uh, you know, and and I wasn't here, um, you know, so I can't sp- speak p- specifically to what he did. But but I know other guys in the past. You know, you change the culture in the weight room. You get those guys really working hard um, and buying in to what you're doing. Uh, you know, you get probably some more kids to come out for football than than maybe you previously had. You know, you get some interest. Uh, you know, you were you were around. What what are some things you remember that changed early on? Oh, early on in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when I came back, when a John Stoner had resigned, is that everybody knew Chip Sherman was from the Missouri side, and they knew the aura that he brought from Platte County, but I don't think anybody in Prairie Village at the time had any idea the impact and the foundation that he would lay nine years later for. 
Dustin Delaney and for Fred Bouchard to come to a traditionally tennis dominated high school mm-hmm. and football even when I was here as a student in the 90s I'm a two and seven three and six Lancer because that's all my cousins knew in the late 80s and 90s coming here to yeah. the school and to see it 20 plus years later as an along with my family all we can do is sit back and smile at a game and wonder where it came from because yeah. great in basketball great in soccer great in every other sport swimming and diving and yeah out of the blue that I mean, 2010 season got everything started to where it is today so yeah. it's more like uh it's uh, giving them getting them the buy-in getting them to it's buy like, in it's, and like, and con- it's like uh yeah because like if they if they sign up for football and they think it's just going to be like hey we're just going to play yeah we're just playing we're just going to win, win a couple games, but if, if you go in thinking, you know what, we might win, we might win some games, and then they do every single thing, and it's a confidence builder. Yeah, because yeah. there was no confidence in the school in the '80s and '90s when I was growing up. Yep, because everybody wanted to play on the soccer team, everyone wanted to play basketball yep. for the basketball staffs, men's or women's, because we knew at the end of week nine in football. All we had to wait was for Thanksgiving on the calendar for basketball season to start because it would be a two and seven, three and six season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for what Chip Sherman, Dustin Delaney, and what Fred Bouchard are going to bring to the school, that mentality of winning has never been seen yeah. in this portion of Northeast Johnson County. Yeah. I mean, I came in the, the in 15, which was right after they had won the state title. Uh, and, and I mean, just the culture that was here, and the work that those kids put in in, in the weight room, and on the foot, on the practice field, and everywhere. I mean, it was just that's what's expected of us. Was this high level? We're going to compete with everybody we play. If we can put your foot on on your throat, if we can put our foot on your throat, we're going to. We're going to choke you out. And you it know, worked. Yeah, we're and going to. And you know. Bringing bringing up, you know, Coach Bouchard is now here. Fred Bouchard, five state titles in Missouri, uh, four Harrisonville, one at Staley. Uh, his success, I mean, everywhere he's been, Harrisonville is still a really good team. They still run oh, some of his stuff. Staley has not fallen off. I mean, they won last year state title. Yeah, they're um, Staley's a well oiled machine because right now, even with uh, Fred being out of the North Kansas City School District and coaching for these last two years going on three. Some of those students there are the freshmen that were there when he was getting ready to leave are now seniors. Mm -hmm. So it's a well-oiled machine. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what Fred Bouchard is essentially getting when he's walking into what Dustin Delaney is handing over to him, which is still better than being behind the eight ball at Gardner Edgerton with, as we had mentioned prior to the, broadcast that Dustin uh, or that Ryan Cornelson was still at state track and he still hadn't come up to Johnson County to meet many of his student athletes so he had no idea who they are and they're coming off a zero and nine season they're not going to be zero and nine in 2018 and they're definitely not going to be zero and nine in 2019 and I would hope that the city of Gardner Edgerton can realize just what one simple coaching change does after, I mean, even a huge and a great run by Marvin Diener. I mean, mm-hmm. he too, he, Marvin Diener, like Chip Sherman and Gene Weir, they're legends in the high school coaching community. Yes. Even at the 6 and the 5A levels from where their previous stops were, they all wanted to come to Johnson County in some way or another. Yeah. And, you know, so I, I, I'm personally, I mean, I'm excited. We're, we're, we've been working all summer, you know, here at East and getting to learn, uh, you know, Coach Bouchard's system. I had coached against some of his Staley teams back when I was at Grandview. I think it was like uh, 2011 and 12. You know, they were a well-oiled machine then. I think 11 was his state title team. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they were always well-disciplined, well-organized. I mean, they knew what was going on. And so me, I mean, I, I learned a lot from working with Dustin Delaney. And, and you'll never hear me say a bad thing about Delaney. I loved working for him. Uh, 
you know, I was sad to see him go, but change.